A member of the 18 prominent personalities that submitted the memorandum to Parliament. Prof, good morning. Morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank and you. Good to have you in the studio. Next to her is uh, Samuel Natijot, Honorable Member of Parliament for Ningo Prom Prom and also a sponsor of the, for the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family value bills. Oh, good morning. Good morning, George. And thank you very much for joining us. The pleasure is mine. Good we'll have uh, Val Zoom, um, His Excellency Lawyer Yuko Otu, uh, former Attorney General and also former High Commissioner to Canada. When we get him on Zoom, we'll also put him on. But we're going to start right here in the studio with uh, Prof and uh, Honorable. Once again, good morning. Good uh, did, morning. Was there any collaboration in terms of the colors? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> it's a good day. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Prof, let me start with you. Yes. Lots of have actually gone on and there have been various conversations about this particular bill. Are we beginning to have a common ground, a common ground where we, both sides are going to something specific about this bill? Thank you very much and good morning to you and your viewers mm -hmm. and thank you for having me. Um, we've had a very tumultuous couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the noise is beginning to die down. Noise. Noise, yes. Why, why did you speak noise? <laughs> because of the flurry of activities. Mm. And especially since Parliament will be convening soon, that we can all focus on the issues, mm -hmm. what is in the bill, and, and, and not what we believe or do not believe. Mm. Um, I cannot... In terms of uh, meeting of minds, I suppose the only agreement is that I'm sure we are all anxious to see what are in the different memos and even more important to be able to appear before the, the Parliamentary Select Commi uh, Committee yeah. on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. And I do not hear. Well, they might, they might call us. Okay. I don't know. Right. To begin to look at the, the memo, the memos and the bill in light mm. of the 1992 Constitution. So, um, as you just read, um, in terms of Article, Article 1, 2 of the Constitution affirms its supremacy mm. and how it overrides any other law that is inconsistent with it. Mm. So, the issues for us are not about numbers, but about whether the Constitution permits, permits. something. And, and it's a fundamental issue. Mm -hmm. that it's not about whether you can marshal 10 million people into the streets, whatever. It is about what the Constitution permits. Mm -hmm. And if you look at our Constitution, the framers of the Constitution I mean, we've, we've had reason in the last few years to talk about. We've had a constitutional review committee whose uh, recommendations have not been implemented, mm -hmm. but there has been some disquiet about certain provisions of the Constitution. But when you look at the Constitution carefully, and I'm a lawyer, mm. um, you, you see that um, the framers try to do a good balancing act. Mm where there is respect for the rights of the majority as well as respect for the rights of the minority and a very conscious attempt to not have the majority at any time oppress mm. the rights of the minority now we must also understand what a constitution is but in this i mean to use the word press doesn't also mean that the rights of the minority is something that needs to be held, upheld Yes, I've helped. Yes. So, okay, I will, I will withdraw that. So, <laughs> what I mean is that, the, especially if you look at uh, Article 21 4E, there is a specific mm. section against that. Okay. So, um, the, the Constitution sets out general principles. It generally does not deal with crime and sanctions, except the, crime, the high crime and treason. And it leaves relevant laws such as the criminal code specific laws to deal with the ills because if you look at the constitution it's talking about everything but those specific laws pick inspiration from the constitution oh yes everything okay. and I, as i said any law mm. that is inconsistent with the constitution will not 
uh, 4. Okay? So, as you have said, Chapter 5 sets out the fundamental human rights and freedoms of everybody, Ga all Ghanaians, mm. and indeed all the people who live in Ghana, whether they are Ghanaians or not. So, uh, and it's irrespective of race, place of origin, political opinion, religion, gender, color, etc. And it is an individual entitlement. Mm. Okay? Sets out the protection of the right to life, to personal liberty, the respect for the human dignity, equality and freedom from discrimination, protection of privacy of home and, uh, and other property, the right to a fair trial, protection from, of, from deprivation of property, etc. Okay. And then in Article 21, it goes into the fundamental freedoms, freedoms. the freedom of speech and expression, the freedom of thought, conscience and belief, the freedom to practice any religion, the freedom of assembly, including taking part in processions and demonstrations, the freedom of association, including the right to form or join trade unions, the freedom of information subject to law, mm -hmm. the freedom of movement. And as I said, so you find So that the main argument for you and the rest of the 17 is based on the Constitution. Very much so. Very not, much not so. Not based on the practice of homosexuality or any of these um, practices. But it, is, it, is, it is based on the dignity and inviolability of every person mm. and the rights that are guaranteed them in the Constitution. Right. And let me say, yes, Quickly, the Constitution does place limitations on rights so subject, subject to the freedom of others mm. and the public interest. And in Article 21.4, there's the Constitution sets a very high bar. There must be a compel compelling reasons in the public interest, and it should be proportionate, okay? Mm -hmm. So where it is by order of a court, where it's in the interest of defense, public safety, public health, running of e essential services, etc. Okay. And it is interesting that it is only when we get to the, to the media in Article 164, that we find a limitation on rights of freedoms of media in the interest of national security, public order, public morality, and the defense of the reputation of others. But Article 165 quickly then says that the restrictions in Article 167 are not to be taken to limit the enjoyment of all the fundamental rights and freedoms guaranteed in chapter five so it's interesting you know the, and the constitution is very explicit mm -hmm. because in other parts it could have said those things but it chose to do that okay. you know so so let me, um, let me, so, so let me just say that quickly, so quickly. if there is a law yeah. that seeks to interfere with a right it must be specifically justified in certain legitimate public interest grounds and it must be shown to be reasonably required or necessary mm. for realizing the legitimate public goals that provide the grounds for the, the bill. Okay. Yeah. Honorable, um, my initial question to her, whether gradually we are just coming to that conclusion where we are understanding. Well, very good morning to <coughs> you and Prof and um, to our viewers. Um, we have always held a position that we have a bill, we have a duty to, per to, to yes. perform. Our duty to perform is to protect the Constitution and protect the citizenry of this Republic. And our bill does just that. Mm. Our bill is in absolute conformity with the Constitution. Um, the processes for a private member's bill are such that if the bill was in contravention of the Constitution, uh, it wouldn't have even gotten the warrant from the speaker mm. to be gazetted. And but so does it take into account the content of the bill? Definitely, that's the point I'm making. After we submitted the bill to the speaker, it took almost a month before we got our warrant of gazette, the warrant to go for gazette, because mm. he referred it to the legal unit of parliament to ensure that it met all the requirements of uh, the constitution, Article mm. 108 for private members mm -hmm. bill and all of that you know and there was a legal opinion that was given to the speaker which conf which 
the speaker himself and don't forget the speaker is a lawyer of many years standing mm -hmm. himself you know um, and the, so after he looked at his legal opinion and looked at it himself he was confident in the fact that it met all the requirements and was in conformity with the constitution now um, I've had uh, I, I've read the the memo by Prof and her colleagues in academia and it's part of our processes I mean our processes welcome memoranda in fact if we had two options mm. We could have taken this a nice certificate of urgency Agency. where we could have laid a bill in the morning and by evening we would have passed it. You could no, go to you could go to you could go to court. You could go to court and argue your way out. The parliament would have passed the bill anyway. You get it. Or we could go through the full process, which is what we've opted to do, simply because we have nothing to hide and simply because we are convinced in the quality of work that's been done. Mm. And so it went through a fresh reading. And Parliament opened up for memos. Uh, we've received 128 memos, which the committee is going to review. There will be a stakeholders meeting where some of the uh, sponsors of memos mm. before the committee will be invited to come and make oral presentations before the committee. Um, we would also be present. Let's, let's be minded about one thing. Even when the government itself presents a bill to Parliament, Parliament makes amendments to it. And so as sponsors of the bill, mm -hmm. we, we, we are minded from the onset that the text of the bill will not necessarily be the same as it is as it was submitted to Parliament. However, okay. amendments to bills are to make them stronger. <laughs> amendments, make them stronger. Yes. <laughs> amendments to bills do not affect the object of a bill. Because every bill mm -hmm. has a purpose. It has an object. Yes. And so when amendments are taking on board those amendments serve the purpose and object of the bill so now, the amendment does not actually matter whether hmm. it's, it's an addition or a subtraction so long as it serves the object of the bill it will be considered favorably okay it will be debated and considered favorably and there will not be an instance where something will be taken out of the bill that's in a way doesn't stand the object of the bill if that op if if what is being taken out in the view of parliament mm. after the debates mm. is argued positively to show that if it remains in the bill would distract or subtract from the achievement of the object of the bill mm. it will be taken out mm. now let's be clear on one thing and i mean prof has gone on to speak about the constitution and i've had many of her colleagues speak about the constitution and rights and all of that i'm happy she has pointed to the fact that rights are not absolute you get it and and goes on to make arguments under um chapter five mm -hmm. article 12 the protections and all of that speaks about the invulnerability of rights in article 15 and and 21 4, 5 and all of that that, that that's fair as well. Mm. But you see, I keep asking one question to our learned professors and members of the academia. Can they point to you what provision of the 1992 Constitution, mm -hmm. and I've seen you have a copy of the Constitution, you can share with Prof if she doesn't have a copy here. So um, lawyer, so what, <laughs> what portion, no, I want for her to read okay. what portion of the Constitution confers rights, homosexual mm. rights, or gay rights, as human rights on anybody mm -hmm. because let's read the constitution let's read the articles that she speaks about okay. and that they cite and that they quote as giving rights when you read 12 which talks about protections of fundamental rights and says that rights shall not be taken away from anybody on the basis and even goes to discrimination i think that discrimination bit is uh where it talks about discrimination it, it, it is clear it, it gives the basis under which you cannot discriminate against a person sexual preference, sexual preference. is not one of them mm. sexual preference is not one of those rights yeah. what it says it gives you race ethnicity religion, religion. Gender. gender it says gender it doesn't say sexual preference homosexuality is not gender homosexuality is a sexual preference so i will be glad and I will be educated mm. if Prof on this show can point out to you a specific provision of the 1992 Constitution 
that provides for sexual preferences as a human right. Mm. In fact, maybe I would need to draw the attention of Prof and her colleagues to a ruling of the European Court of Justice. <laughs> the European Court of Justice is the, is the highest court mm. in the EU. It has ruled that homosexuality is not a human right. The European Court of Justice yeah. has ruled that it is not a human right. So on what basis? You see, the entire memo and the entire argument has been that it's the violation of a of human, human right. If it is not a human right, how are you violating it? You are violating something that doesn't exist. Now, let us also be minded, and mm. I'm, I'm hoping that Prof. and colleagues have averted their mind to Article 39 of the Constitution. Yeah. Yes, we have. Very well. Article 39 of the Constitution, and that's why I, I say that... about the cultural yeah, objective. Cultural and, that's why, and that's why I say that our, const our bill deals specifically with the Constitution, or is in con con consonance with the Constitution. 39.1 says, subject to clause 2 of this article, the state shall take steps to encourage the integration of appropriate customary values. Mm -hmm. And I've heard them ask, what are Ghanaian values? If we did not know what, or if we had no definition for Ghanaian values, which are our customary values, mm -hmm. the constitution, which they seek to come under, would not have mentioned customary values. The constitution takes into cognizance that we have Ghanaian family values, which are customary values. It says, we shall, the state shall take steps to encourage the integration of appropriate customary values into the fabric of national life through formal and informal education and the conscious introduction of cultural dimensions to relevant aspects of national planning. Okay. This same constitution recognizes the National House of Chiefs as the custodian <laughs> of Ghanaian customary values. Mm. The National House of Chiefs has spoken explicitly on what Ghanaian customary values are relative to homosexuality. It does not find expression in our customary uh, values. Uh, well, earlier, you, you, you mentioned that you talked about the European Court that says that uh, <laughs> issues concerning homosexuality is not a human rights issue. And uh, you touched on the whole aspect of human rights, which uh, Prof and her colleagues are talking about. Can there be a distinction between the being as a human being and the act that the being is involved in? Can, can there be a distinction between the two? Well, the, 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 when you say can it be a distinction, yes, there's a human being mm -hmm. and there's an act, mm -hmm. but it takes a human being to commit the act. Mm -hmm. In court, to determine criminality, <laughs> it's not just about the act. <laughs> it is also the intent. There's the actus rules and the mens rea. Yes, yes, okay? Yes. And so when the individual is engaged in an act, that is deemed illegal. That is where and it is done with the intent to commit the act. That is where you can find the person for for or, or, or for criminal uh, who is liable criminally. Mm. And so, for me, our bill simply focuses on protecting Ghanaian family values and prescribing activities of individuals that are inimical to our customary values, inimical to their health. And you see, when Prof cited some of the constitutional provisions, including the media freedoms and all of that, and I hope that we have the time to explore at, uh, clauses 11 and 12 of our bill, which oh, well, deals with good, media, the, 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 the clamping, what they claim is a clamp down on media freedom. The constitution is clear. Mm. There are bases for which you can curtail rights, even if those rights exist. Mm -hmm. So there are two layers to this argument. First and foremost, the right mm -hmm. to exist. Like I said, I'll be grateful, very grateful, if Prof can point us to the way I have read 39, mm. which gives us the basis. If she can read to you what portion of the constitution confers a right on the basis of, of sexual of preference, preference, I'll be glad okay. and I'll be educated. Okay. Secondly, if she's able to do that, that then establishes a certain fundamental human right existing in our constitution. If she doesn't do that, then this whole conversation is dead on arrival. <laughs> but if she does, then we then go to what the constitution places as the frameworks and the boundaries mm. for the enjoyment of rights public health public safety public morality and subject it to whatever rights she would determine for us to this three-pronged test and see <laughs> it will pass right. i mean to my earlier question 
when it comes to issues about fundamental human rights, mm. is it based on the fact that an individual is concerned as a human being? Or is based on the fact that that human being is involved in certain acts. <laughs> like, I just want to right, <laughs> the rights are conferred yes. on human beings. The okay. rights are not conferred on acts. Yes. The right is conferred on a human, on a human being. being first. So, so, so the right to life mm -hmm. is a right conferred on the human being, not on life. Mm -hmm. It is on the human being. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's what I'm saying. That if you say there is a certain right. Or you say that this, this bill will discriminate against persons on the basis of their preference. Okay. Show me where in the Constitution you ground that argument in. Okay. The rights you say you enjoy. The Constitution is explicit in mentioning the rights that we enjoy or that are conferred on you. The rights are not in a vacuum. The rights are specific. So those rights are stated in the Constitution. Show me those rights. And when it comes to the discrimination, also show us the basis for which sexual preference is a discrimination in the Constitution. Okay, I thought that we have uh, His Excellency Aitoku. I quote to actually uh, via Zoom. I will go to him shortly. Let me move to um, Prof here. Prof, he's yeah. raised some issues and yeah. asked a question whether so, so there's any aspects of the Constitution yes, that gives you. the right to... And, I, and I like the question that you asked. You see, I, I started by saying that the Constitution sets out general principles mm. but it is very clear on these fundamental freedoms and rights of people which attach to people because they are human beings not because of their sexual preference and i think that you know we 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 look we are heterosexual mm -hmm. but it's not like everything that we do is judged it's as if every time every minute of the day you're thinking about sex you're thinking about what you are going to do so the constitution grants that protection to everybody, including non ghanaians in Ghana, irrespective of their sexual orientation. Mm. Now, let me, you know, this issue of how the state regulates sexual relations, mm. it's not a new thing at all. Um, oh, I mean, no, wait, wait, no, no. Just to clarify, no, no, in addressing his question, no, no, the Constitution doesn't give such provision. No, 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 but it is not true. The Constitution does not go into uh, you see, the 19, this is the 1992 Constitution. Exactly. It has set out those things mm -hmm. and that this is the protection. It doesn't talk about heterosexuals. It doesn't talk about homosexuals. It talks about people. And that is what we want the debate to focus on. The fact that lesbian, gay people... They are Ghanaians mm. and they are persons. Mm. That is the fundamental thing. Not because they are gays. Not because they are gays or lesbians. But they are human beings. These persons are involved in such. No, no. They may well in, in the in the bill mm. that is before Parliament. They talk about somebody who is asexual, who does not even have any kind of desire. It doesn't matter. That person is also targeted. Okay, in the definitions, mm. in the interpretation, they go about it. But let me say that. Can I respectfully no, just ask no, 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 for please, asexual let me, have let been targeted in the bill? How? Let Where? me, let me, let me, let no, me. That's just, a specific no, no, reference please, to the bill. Please, please, in let me, what way have they no, been targeted? No, sorry, right, I didn't right, interrupt right, you. Let me finish. When it comes to your let's point, have you do that. Let's have so, so what I'm saying is that. <laughs> when Can you for the aspect of the asexual? No, no. You have a copy of the bill of the promotion of the. Yes. Yes. So, you can read it. So it says that. Yeah. Just go on. I'll look for that. Just, yes. Just you, on, okay. Yeah. So, so we are talking about a situation mm -hmm. where um, the ways in which. Um, oh, just a quick one. A sexual means an individual who generally does not have sexual desire or attraction to any group of persons, but does not include a celibate. Yes. So wh why why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? Why should an, an asexual person even be mentioned? Somebody who does not have sexual desire. What is the problem with that? But let me go on. So when we are talking about <laughs> sex, because a lot is being made about sexual relations. Mm -hmm. huh? So what is the state interest in sex? Because it is recognized that sex is a private matter. But sex may involve abuse, mm -hmm. exploitation, use of force. So mm -hmm. generally, there are three things that the state is interested in. Yes. There's somebody have capacity. Have they given consent? Is the act done in private? Mm. If, if you can establish those things, then it is okay. That is why almost everywhere, 
rape is criminalized because there is no consent. Defilement is also criminalized. Incest or bestiality is criminalized. Mm. Okay. And then because sex is recognized as intimately private, if you come and have it in private, in public, then you, you violate the, the decency yeah. rule. Okay. Beyond this, sex, there is very little public interest justification for criminalizing sex. If you have consenting adults and they are doing something in private, it is not the business of anybody. Now, sex is different from marriage. Marriage is, public, is a public institution mm -hmm. and it is regulated. Sex is not. Okay? That is why adultery is not. It's a matter of morality. It's, morality, it's yes. not, however much we may frown against it, it is not criminalized. The state has not. Exactly. And premarital sex beyond minus is also not criminalized. Mm. And we are saying that this bill is a massive intrusion into people's lives. Okay? So we are saying also that same sex is not equal to same marriage because of what I've said. Mm. The sex is a private affair and marriage is a public institution. So because of that, you can deny people from getting married because you can come up with what it violates. Yes. But you cannot tell two people what they can or cannot do in private. Mm. Okay? So, and, and I insist that nobody is saying that if you go into the constitution, you will find any reference to a homosexual in the same way that you will not find reference to a heterosexual. What, what happens, the explanation you have given, mm. what happens to... No, I, sorry. I want to come to a point because okay, one, of the, one of the confusions that comes up is the issue of prostitution. Okay? Mm. Prostitution by its very nature is a commercial transaction and the, and the state has a legitimate interest in regulating mm. it. Okay? Mm. Are they paying taxes? Often, and then even the issue of consent sometimes. Are people really doing it because they are consenting? There's a lot of issues around exploitation, drugs, mm. crime, etc. around prostitution. So that one is not applicable to private consensual sex. Okay. okay. So, so, no, this so is the, this is the legal... The, this is the conversation we are having. So in some, in some having, jurisdictions... Uh, Prof, just, just hold on for me. Mm. In the conversation we are having, in the context of what we are talking about now, if the race, a custom, yeah, I was values. coming to the cultural. I was exactly. coming to the cultural. Under, under Article 39. No, no, yes. Even, even listen. Article yes. 26 of the Constitution outlaws mm. all cultural practices which dehumanize or are injurious to the physical and well, mental well-being of a person. Mm -hmm. So culture is not a monolith. Okay. I also happen to be an anthropologist, by the way. Yeah. But so culture is not a monolith. So you can't just wave anything. You cannot uh, kill somebody ritually and say that your culture allows it. So Article 26 outlaws all cultural practices which dehumanize or are injurious to the physical and well-being, mental well-being of a person. Mm -hmm. And it is when we get to the directive principles of state policy in Article 39 that the state is commanded in Article 39.3 to ensure that the traditional practices which are injurious to the health and well-being of the person are abolished. Mm. Abolished. That is a very strong word. Not my word. Are it's in the, the well-being of a person. person are abolished. Mm. So it is about the dignity and physical and mental well-being of the individual person that is of concern okay. to the listening. And indeed the state is enjoined to, um, you know, find a way to bring, um, to take steps to realize the cultural let me, let me, let me go to perspective. Exactly through, exactly through formal and informal education. education. Let me it didn't say through law. But the state, or the constitution also talked about the state projecting and promoting values that are Ghanaian, Ghanaian values. Yes, it says appropriate, yes. appropriate yes. customer and cultural exactly. values adopted and developed. Exactly. In other words, it, it, it understands that some things may be there, but they will need to be shaped. I'll, I'll come to Honorable, yes. um, just for... Uh, a follow up on the response to that. Let me look, quickly go to Zoom and join His Excellency. How you please join us on the line? Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, the debate has been going on, and um, f 
for and against uh, this whole bill. Where should we start looking at this from as, as a country itself? Well, thank you. Um, you're talking about a law. The, it means that we have to look at the memorandum because this is a new bill which is coming. Yeah. So the issue for me is what does the memorandum say? What is this law targeted at? And it seems to me that it is after studying the memorandum closely that one begins to understand where the sponsors are coming from. It appears that most people are looking at this bill as something uh, just against uh, homosexuality or, if you like, uh, 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 gayism. But if you look at the term used, LGBTQ, mm -hmm. you know, this, to me, go beyond, you know, uh, just having sex. And therefore, we have to look at the whole government. What does it mean to talk about LGBTQI? What are they? And are they becoming prevalent in our society? Is anybody trying to promote these things? And are these things against our culture? I think that's where we should start from. And to me, having read the memorandum and having listened to the sponsors, I think all the arguments they are making can be found in the, in, 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 in the, in the, in the memorandum that there was this uh, uh, occasion when uh, a, a resource, LGBTQT something, resource center was opened, and then you found some you know, European ambassadors attending and then trying to give some, you know, a frequency to it, started talking about it. So their problem is that what are we now dealing with? Have we, uh, is our culture on the attack? Are, are we now being asked to follow this LGBT things? Remember that it, it is not the first time I mean, Kufour had time to say that he won't support it. Ata Mills had time to say that I am not going to support it. Their culture is different from our culture. Our president has also said he won't support it. It's against our culture and all that. So those who talk about constitutionalism in terms of constitutional rights of freedom, fundamental human rights, my issue is this. Do we have a situation where something has started in the West and now being imported or exported into our countries and whether we are ready to, to, to go along with it. Mm. I mean, how can someone say, I'm transgender, I mean, I don't care, I don't know whether I'm a male or a female. Uh, I want to, I'm a man, but I think I want to marry another man. I don't want to marry a woman. You see, when you, you, you go into the LGBT things, then you begin to see that the problem is, is more uh, uh, serious than this whole idea of just such sexual orientation, if you like. You know, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah days, we have heard about it. You know, the biblical times, we've heard about uh, you know, our own uh, criminal law trying to uh, 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 104, you know, put it in on, on natural common knowledge and all that. Have, haven't we got beyond the ordinary homosexual thing? And I'm talking about queerism and uh, 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 <laughs> transgender things, all those. Are we ready for this? That the, our Ghanaian culture? I think that is why we should start talking all right, your, 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 policy, your, your initial uh, comments and asking questions, whether uh, we've been able to answer or resolve exactly what uh, the LGBTQ plus is all about. I mean, those things have been addressed in the, in the bill. I mean, the, proper, the definitions given to all aspects of it. And um, yes, you've heard people in the argument that this is going against our cultural values and their concerns raised. So these questions you've asked... Uh, have been provided for in terms of answers, especially by the sponsors of this bill. And the second, and the second aspect, also, Your Excellency, and the second aspect has got to do with um, whether we are prepared for such a practice in this country. Now, the sponsors also of this memoranda are also saying and talking about issues concerning rights. That these people that we are talking about, 
have rights and we need to protect these rights. So these are the counter arguments put up to the two sides of the uh, debate you have raised. Yes, the point I'm making is that can we look at those things, not only as against whether sex is a private matter between two consenting adults, transgenderism and all those other definitions that come on LGBTQ, are they also matters that we have to concern ourselves with? And if you ask me, my position is that these are new phenomena. They were not there until recently that uh, people decide, oh, okay, now as for me, I'm transgender. I don't know whether I'm a man or a woman, and that uh, I, although I'm born a man, I feel that I'm a woman, so I want to dress up like a woman. And they say, you know, I want to uh, visit the latest washroom. I don't want to go to the male washroom. These are new phenomena which have come out. It's got, they've got nothing to do with the old traditional systems of homosexuality and gayism and the rest. So to me, I'm saying that the, the proponents or the sponsors of the bill are drawing attention to some of these other things that are added to the homosexual and gayism and whether they are part of our culture and they believe that they are not part of our culture and we should not support them. That is why I also stand. Okay. What about the debate about uh, rights, their rights? You see, those rights are, are quite uh, you know, problematic, to, if, if you ask me. Okay. I mean, you are saying that somebody has a freedom of thought and expression, and that fellow can wake up this morning and decide that, look, this my wife is giving me too much trouble, so I, I, I couldn't sleep. I've been thinking about my wife the whole day. I think I should put a stop to you by killing her. Does it mean I have the right to kill her? Because that's what my conscience tells me. And then look at, I mean, all our criminal laws. That we, are we not targeting specific offenses that we think you know, ought not to be done? I, I mean, somebody decides to take his own life, and we are telling you that you can commit suicide. Why? Why can't I take my own? So in all these things, there must be some limitations. That is why they keep telling you that those rights are not absolute. Okay. And so if you are doing things which keep confusing little children as to where they belong, whether they are being born male or female and the rest, I don't think we should just say it is a freedom of thought and expression. Okay. Other than that, it, using that freedom of thought and expression can be used in, in, as, a, as a, a defense to cover anything I thought that anybody can do. I tell you that my conscience tells me I should go and do this. So okay. I've done it. All right, okay. Uh, just because of the public, I've lost some messages here on Facebook. Let me just read one or two of them, then I'll move to Honorable um, Sam George. I'll come to you after. Yes. Yes, uh, this one's from uh, Ni Okanye J. says that the Constitution grants all persons freedom of association. What is wrong with an LGBTQ office and i have another one to uh, say that the international human uh the international human right is not um, higher than each country's law and culture or even beliefs it is known fact that every country has its own culture that governs its citizens the 1992 constitution outlaws rights and freedoms these rights and freedoms seem limited according to the laws and beliefs check uh matrimonial laws <laughs> If you marry more than one, it's against the British law. Why isn't human rights issues raised there? Mm -hmm. All right. And this is coming from, uh, that's uh, Bolton Kweku. And I don't want to say that. Is that what uh, our parents, uh, okay, we'll leave that one. Oh, let's start off with um, the sexual aspect. Yes. Then we'll move uh, to other areas. Yeah. No, at times when you... And, and I mean, I say this without any malice, but I, I, at times when I listen to... Um, our members of the academia, they are quite condescending. Condescending? Yeah. In the way they think <laughs> and the way they, they, they address us and everything. But, but that's fine. Why, why that description? Anyway? Well, you just, need to, you just need to follow the conversation. You'd see the <laughs> condescension. But, but that, that, that's fine. Okay. In the condescending manner in which they address us in the bill, mm. it exposes the paucity of attention to detail on the part of the academic. Okay. <laughs> Prof, and Prof was quick to state to you that she's a lawyer. Yes. And so she has legal training and background. She has, she takes offense with the bill in interpreting asexual. The fact that asexuals, the, the, the term asexual mm -hmm. is defined in clause two of the bill, which is headlined interpretation. Mm -hmm. How does that constitute a criminal offense? 
Now, that's why I said there's, why a, paucity, the there's a paucity of attention to detail. Okay. And that happens when you're condescending. You don't pay attention to the details. The details here will tell you that we outline what the offenses are in Clause 6 mm -hmm. of the bill. Prohibition of LGBTQ, Q, LGBTT, QQ, IAAP+. Plus. Now, we state all the things that are there and actually then go in 6 one e to list them out and she has a copy of the bill she should please follow Hold out as lesbian holds out as i a lesbian, a, lesbian a gay a transgender yeah. a transsexual a queer a pansexual an ally a non-binary where in that you see asexual so why is asexual in the bill Prof. why is it in the bill? Prof. failed Prof. you have Prof. failed Prof. to Prof. pay Prof. attention to detail you have gone ahead of yourself to peddle on truths and wow. paint a picture. So, uh, Teacher George, uh, oh. well, you have I, to withdraw that. No, no. Oh no! But if you sat here and said we have criminalized asexuals, I have just why, why is asexual oh, in oh, the oh, bill? It's okay. it, it, listen, when you look at the full spectrum of the LGBT, what, 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 yes. what, what? One of the A's. There are two A's. Yes. One is asexual. One is ally. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with the spectrum, in an interpretation section. You will go ahead and do interpretations <laughs> of everything. The interpretation section is not a criminal section. Mm -hmm. As a lawyer, I expect her to but, know but that. As a professor in America, not, I expect her to know that. Not addressing a sexual, why should it? It would there? deal with it. It deals with it subsequently in another part. Just the same issue with intersex, and I can give you the example of intersex. Mm. Again, you, you realize that with asexual, you see, that's the issue. when we went ahead to talk about the intersex. Mm -hmm. When we listed out what you just I just read out and yes. you've confirmed yes. intersex is not listed there. Yes. We go on to talk about intersex in F, where we say anybody you you'll be held guilty if you carry out participate or provide any procedure mm -hmm. that is intended to create a sexual category other than the sexual category of a person assigned at birth. Then we put in an exception clause, mm -hmm. except in the case of correcting a biological anomaly, <laughs> including intersex. intersex yes. So again they'll tell you why did you define intersex every bill has an interpretation section so and i would expect that provision touch on the asexual apart from the interpretation expert that you we, we talked about earlier in there I, I've, I've told you why we interpreted asexual <laughs> we interpreted asexual because of the spectrum yes i'm challenging her to say that she should point out to you in our bill she said to criminalize asexuals people who don't have sexual feelings and i'm saying she so should exactly point it why out why is that in the bill it is not there that's what I'm saying to you. Why that is that mentioned are, in there? I, did you listen to me? I, I said did listen the to full you. spectrum of homosexuality. Yes. How they call themselves. Yes. Is L G B T T Q Q I A A P plus. plus. And I'm saying to you that the A A mm. one stands for asexual, one stands for allies. So in our interpretation clause, right. <laughs> what we did was to define every okay. letter okay. that they have ascribed to themselves. Mm. But after, in, after describing and, in, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and defining everything, you then go out to then do what the object of the bill is. What is the bill criminalizing? And in those ones, and that's why I say that the, the academics have done a service to this country and the public by misleading the public. Mm -hmm. First, they started with the intersex. I exposed them on that. She's come on with a sexual again today. I have exposed them on that. That nowhere <laughs> does it criminalize uh, because the and you see, I'm, every time I come in, I I drop something. First time I asked you to cha I challenged Prof to show you where in the Constitution sexual preference is a fundamental right. Mm. Sexual preference is not a fundamental right for homosexuals or heterosexuals. It is not because it is not a right. Mm. She could not point that out to you in the Constitution. In the Constitution, she couldn't. She vacillated, around, she vacillated around the issues, danced around it, but failed to point out to you. Now again, I've gone to my bill, our bill, mm -hmm. and I'm saying to you that she should point out to you in the bill where asexuals have been criminalized. Because in her own submission, she tried to, that's where the condescension came in, ridicule us. That even people who do not have sexual attractions towards anything, we are criminalizing them. Now I am asking her, do the, 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 the honorable thing and show us in the bill where asexuals have been criminalized. Mm. If you can't, admit on national TV that you and your colleagues have misled the, the, the country. Now, another thing we should point out oh, here. Another thing we should point out here. She says, oh, prostitutes, it's a commercial en enterprise. Mm. Are they paying taxes? And that's why the state can get involved she in it. That's, that's a form of she raised that as a comparison. Yes. yes, and I'm saying to you that, look, when, 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 when they make that argument, again, it's laughable. 
laughable because when when you tell me that because I've been doing the comparison between persons engaged in homosexuality as an illegal act and armed robbery. Then they say, oh, armed robbery is not consensual. Then I threw in the, the prostitution bit. Now they're telling you it's a commercial activity. Okay. Now, now go to the gay bars and see if it is also not a commercial activity where persons are putting themselves up and, 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 and selling off sex in the gay bars that we see. Mm. Now, again, dignity of the person. She raises dignity of the person. Tell me what is dignifying about fecal incontinence, which is a byproduct of homosexuality. <laughs> and like Honorable Laiko Otu said, let's go beyond just lesbians and gays and deal with queers. What is that? Who are those? How is that a right? Mm. Transgenders. Today the person feels he's male. Tomorrow he's female. How can that be a right? And as a lawyer, she knows. That when you go to the court to enforce a right, those rights are always enforced within a boundary. Prof, respectfully, what is the boundary of the LGBTQQIAAP plus? Because you know why I say what's the boundary? The you have plus. Which makes provision for anything. Yeah. Just just three days ago, we saw the Canadian president, Justin Trudeau, introduce two new two new alphabets or even this time, two S. S yeah. So tomorrow. If somebody, and, and rightly, you said incest and bestiality have been criminalized. There are members of the public who are saying that if you think it is okay for a man to change him, his sex to a woman and then be able to have sex with a person of the opposite sex, it is okay for me to also carry out my attraction to my daughter or my son. Mm. Once it is also consensual, so incest, and they are coming under the plus. So that is where the danger of enforcing rights that are indeterminate but do we have a law exists. against incest in ghana yes. Yes. yes we do yes there's a law against same that. way you have a law against unnatural canal knowledge okay, and they'll be quick to knowledge. tell yes. you unnatural canal knowledge doesn't cover it well in banusin versus the republic and reported mm -hmm. a 2014 case the supreme court of ghana has established what canal knowledge natural canal knowledge is mm. and defined it clearly in that case we put in our memo where it is the penetration of the vagina and the vulva by a penis mm. anything other than that is illegal or is not unnatural now let's make a, a anything other here. than that is illegal <laughs> it's, 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 it's a natural canal okay, now, right. now quickly yes <laughs> just so that prof understands she says the state has no business going into the private business of people in section f plus five of our bill duty to report duty to report yeah. and i've seen in their memo they say we are trying to criminalize everybody who doesn't wear a report this is what he says again again a failure to pay attention to detail <laughs> five one says a person in whose presence an offense is committed, committed. a person in whose presence an offense is committed when any crime happens in your presence the police always invites you for a statement be it robbery be it assault be it rape so long as you are a witness to a crime you are a person who would assist the criminal investigation okay how is this how is this now the basis for our academics some academics have been told this that i should i should qualify just, that yes. some yes. academics yes. some 18 academics to tell the country that this is us imposing a criminal liability on every citizen what about her if the thing did not happen in your presence, what, what responsibility what, do you what have about her argument of separating the human being from the act because according to her the human being it's the, the human being has rights as a human being before any other for the purposes of this conversation yes let me accept that that the human being has rights yes now she should point out to you yes which part of the constitution gives a human being heterosexual or homosexual gives him a right on the basis of a sexual preference <laughs> because the act you are talking about is a sexual preference, preference. it's a sexual act when the constitution bestows a, 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 a right on you it does it in a certain context when the constitution in article 17 says that you should not be discriminated against it doesn't mention sex it says gender gender and gender is male or female the okay. constitution never mentions sex when it says there should be no discrimination and when people talk about associations and say, yes and say associations there are rights to associate 
Why don't you recognize the association of arm robbers? Why don't you have, uh, recognize the association of arm robbers? Are what? We can't compare arm robbers to. Why can't you? Is it not an illegal offense? Um, why, you have, can't get illegal offense. Fantastic. It's, it's, there's a law against that. Fantastic. Yes. Why? And, why? And why? why prescribes, uh, oh, beautiful. Why yeah. don't we have? Uh, why don't you have an association of terrorists? Oh. It's also against our law. Fantastic. There's a law against. Why that. don't we have? Why? Why don't we have an association of prostitutes? We there's a law against that. Good. As we speak today, what does Section 104 of our Criminal Offences Act say about unnatural like canal knowledge? So why do we want to does have that, an association does, does, does of that persons? that law exclusively apply to <laughs> LGBTQ and all? Now I'll give you the answer to that. Yeah. That law was passed in 1960. That law, that law was passed in 1960. Mm. Antecedents. She's an anthropologist. Yes. Anthropologists like to trace the antecedents of teachers. <laughs> in 1960, yes. what did the world know? Was there anything like queers? was passed before was there, there was a what, colonial what, law was there was, was there was there anything you know, we're talking about criminal offenses yes. and that's what we have now there was, was passed like at, at, oh, well, at 29 was, yes. was 1960 yeah. section 104 that's what we're mm. dealing with yeah. was there anything like queers was there anything like transgenders at the time no and that is why the text of 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 it at that time what we knew as homosexuality was gayism mm. and that's why the text of section 104 dealt explicitly with with it okay. that law is 61 years old. another law that was passed 61 years ago was the business uh, the, the company's code we changed the company's that code changed. we so, changed so it change because your we changed Can the I company's code we changed, the company. we changed the company's code yes. because we realized that the way of doing business in 1960 mm -hmm. is different from doing business today exactly today if we realize that section 104 even when the police arrest lesbians mm -hmm. Uh, uh, is, is incapable of dealing with that. What was the spirit of the law? When you read the letter of the law, yeah. you read the intentment of the framers of the law. Okay. All right. Um, and so this bill you. is to deal with the current state of the <laughs> insatiable desire of a certain group mm -hmm. of people to appropriate all the 26 okay. alphabets you have, you have, of the you have, you have, you've read the letters of yeah. the alphabet. So, so you listen to his exercise to precisely listen to honorable year. Thank you very much. And, I, and I, I leave it to the viewers to judge who is condescending and who is uncivil and who does not tell the truth. I watched your CNN interview where you did not even know when the Equal Rights Amendment was passed in the United States. Women got the vote in the United States in 1920, not 1960. In any case, so let's go to this issue about the unanimity mm. of this bill. Just a few days ago, the chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs mm. had expressed himself on the constitutionality of this bill. Yeah. Article 108 gives private members the right yes. to bring a bill. And some of us have supported that right. Curiously, the first bill that was sponsored under the private members bill was an amendment to the road traffic uh, uh, act and there is something about unborn fetuses in that act and it many people did not notice it we are suggesting that it is that same impetus that has informed this current bill honorable bedra mp for who yes. has actually told us on city fm the genesis of this bill where it started i heard uh, this honorable, current bill talking yes about. i heard honorable sam joe uh, sam george say that he did not go to the proper proper human uh, the world congress of families oh, family, yes. and the national coalition for proper human sexual rights mm. conference in november 2019. these people have a playbook and this playbook has been playing all around the world. So if you, has a playbook. this World Congress of Families, which okay. is a right-wing U.S. organization mm -hmm. that has been going around the world promoting bills such as this one. Now, when they promote it... Those LGBTQ people no, no. also have a playbook. No, no, that is fine. I'm talking about not an LGBT person. I'm telling That's you... So why are you I'm supporting it? So, because mm -hmm. I am a fair-minded person, and please let me finish oh, no, so so <laughs> so there's this playbook and in each place they come up with a cultural argument so something that is so foreign one of the things about everything that has been said and i heard honorable Aikwe to say mm -hmm. foreign this he even says it's like we were okay with the ordinary homosexual thing what does it mean there is, there was an ordinary homosexual thing mm -hmm. in ghanaian society right mm -hmm. honorable sam george next year i'll be 70 when i was growing up I knew Koyo Besiers in Kumasi and all of those places. If you go around Accra, you will find them yeah, also. Yeah. So maybe this is the ordinary homosexual thing. There was a colonial law against 
1960, we were a republic. Mm. Okay? There was a colonial law against uncarnal natural yeah, knowledge. Yeah. Who was it targeted at? We have to be careful about these things. Who was it targeted at in the colonial period and in 1960? So, when we, we don't want something, when we don't like something, we say it's foreign. It's on Ghanaian. But Ghanaians really like foreign things. Eh? All the cars, the watches, the iPhones, everything. But not, not on this. Though. No, no, wait. Because there's nothing foreign about it. There is a cultural okay. war which has been imported into this country. Huh? And then we get this, the same people who say, oh, let's stick to Ghanaian things. There's a cultural war that has been imported Cultural in this war. 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 That has war. been imported into Yes, this there are cultural wars that are going on in the U.S. Yes. And that right-wing advocates are spreading around the world mm. and making it like it is our problem. It is our issue. So somebody will tell you, we know they don't, it's not same-sex marriage now, but it will happen in the future. The law does not deal with future events, okay? Mm -hmm. The law, when you pass a law, you are curing a mischief of something Nothing that mischief. is happening yeah. now. You don't uh, dream, or maybe because they are prophets, they are prophesying what will happen mm. in the future. So this business, so first of all, I'm going back to Article 108. Yes. So the Article 108 gives members of parliament, the private members, right? Like, so long as they don't impose a charge on the uh, public funds. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the policing functions... But that's supposed to be determined by the speaker. No, no, no. No, but the speaker, how does he determine it? It has to be a reasonable determination. All these arrests and reports and things. And the prisons, all the people who are going to go to prison, where will they stay? Already our prisons are overcrowded. They have to be fed. Mm. This is a charge on the consolidated fund. And this <laughs> is the point that the chairman of the parliamentary committee is making. Mm. Okay? Now, you could have taken it to parliament under a certificate of urgency. You could not. You are not the executive. You know? So let us be, sh be clear. Let's not obfuscate and tell lies that we could have done this, you know, etc. Okay. Now, when, please... Two people spoke. No, Give me the time. I'm, I'm just, so when but you, I'm allowed to ask you questions. Yes, you so can. Yes, yes. So when you say amendments to the bill, mm. the bill can be amended in every and any way. It can be amended in any and every way. Mm. Parliament asks for memos. Huh? We are all allowed to speak. Yes. And Parliament itself, it's not just to make them stronger. It will be to expand anything, allow, assuming that law passes. Mm. And we are suggesting that that law does not deserve to pass. Okay, oh. so this business about the EU Court of Justice, mm. when it suits the proponents of the bill, they can cite things from everywhere. It's not foreign. And that is one of the things, as a researcher, I was appalled. There was no evidence. There are insinuations. There is no evidence to, from, from what done in Ghana to support anything in the bill. When they try... There's no evidence. No, that. no, there's no evidence. All this conversion theory, it is therapy. It is dubious. It has been condemned mm. by the American uh, Medical Association, the American Association of Psychiatry, the American Association of Pediatrics, the American Association of Counselors. In Ghana, it's like it has finished raining, and we are bringing our bucket to come and take some. Mm. Okay? So just in France, two days ago, they actually outlawed this conversion theory, uh, therapy. Thing. So part of my thing, and which led me to an attack on me by an MP that I had said that we live in a country where ordinary malaria kills people. We haven't st finished solving those problems and we are pretending that we can deal with people's sexual orientation. It's a joke and I will insist. It's not because we don't have a malaria control program. I'm saying that people die, still die mm. from communicable and non-communicable diseases and that is what we should really focus on. Okay. Sin is the purview of the church and you crime is the purview of the state yes. and in fact all the mobilization of our religious leaders suggests that they haven't done their work properly mm. all the morality issues that they cannot deal with they are now asking the state to come and deal with it do you, so do you, do you consider research organized by institution as, as an evidence to certain things happening in society oh yes i think i think i think that, that if, if if i want something to be passed yeah. based on Ghanaian law and Ghanaian culture etc i would use evidence here so okay so if you acknowledge that if you acknowledge that 
what do you make of the CDD? Uh, no, uh, Prince, I'm coming to the CDD research. The yes. CDD research is being misused. 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 How? The CDD research showed that 93, 97% yes. of Ghanaians are so intolerant. And that Ghana comes on top of 23 African countries of being most intolerant. Mm. This is not something to celebrate. Mm. And in fact, the may, may, no, 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 the contents of an evidence which no, 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 we said yeah, there was no but, evidence. But, but that is not, that, that was <laughs> not the purpose of the CDD <laughs> report. Mm. The CDD, by the way, is not a right-wing mm. organization, Mr. Sam George. Mm. But the point is that the CDD report was looking at a range of yeah. attitudes on ethnicity, on political preferences, mm. etc. So it was a range. Yes. And what they found was this. Now the point is that that abhorrence the fact that the majority of people, and in fact the UN uh, Special Rapporteur, when they came to Ghana, they were saying that this was evidence that the state should either actually protect mm. that community against this unbridled hostility and, uh, and intolerance. Yeah. Now you empower them by giving them a law to go after these people? No. You see, that is why okay. I'm saying that you, you have to be careful in interpreting it. The other evidence that I have heard, Mr. The, the, yes. the, the other evidence that I have heard, Mr. Sam George use mm. is the Ghana, the National AIDS, the Ghana National Ghana AIDS Commission, Ghana AIDS Commission research, telling us that 18.1 percent of men who have sex with men are HIV uh, uh, positive. positive. The 82, the other 82 percent, they are heterosexuals. So what is this focus on on the uh, men having sex with men. Yes, yes. So again, we have to be careful how we use it. And the money that is spent on anti-retrovirals, most of it, which doesn't come to, from Ghana anyway, but I would advise that the, the leakages that the Auditor General's report and all the Parliamentary Accounts Committee reports, that as an MP, this is where he let should me, focus his okay. energies. Okay. Right. Let me, let me no, go please, to, let, let me just, think, let me just I think, finish. I think I've given you enough time to do this. <laughs> to, let me just to, go to, to listen to two people. We, no, no, I, I mean, I'm giving you enough time No, but time I just that. want just... to say something to Mr. Ikwe Otu. Okay. He's a lawyer. Yes. Former and a former attorney, attorney general. general. Yes. And I expect him to base his argument on law and the Constitution. Hasn't he done that? No, he has not. Why has he, he has done, done that? He has based his arguments on culture and all this. So oh, he's talked about oh, rights. He no, no, right. no. He, he talked about rights. Only to dismiss. And cited the, ex the example only to, of suicide. Only to dismiss them. So, if the law on suicide yes. is inadequate, throw it out. Reform it. Okay? If section 104... But why is he even criminalized? I mean, if someone... Precisely. I, I don't happen to agree with it. But what I'm saying yes. is that... Anything. This was done in 1960. Yes. It's not good enough. Strengthen it. Let me Don't bring a punitive law in its stead. Okay. Yes. Let me move to uh, His Excellency Ayukoji. Uh, I just have about 50 more minutes for us to wrap up. And uh, <laughs> what, what should be the way forward for all the stakeholders here, especially Parliament, that's going to determine this at the end of the day? <laughs> and if you'd like I to respond to what Prof said, I mean, I'll give you about two minutes to do that. Then we can move to the substantive question. Well, I think Sam George, I would advise Sam George to tone down on his language. Because once you say somebody is lying and you try to, you know, attack the, the person's integrity and therefore the person may have to react. And then it uh, 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 leads to all kinds of uh, comments being made here and there. So please. Let's tone down on the personal parts and look at the issues. I am satisfied in my mind that all the professors are, 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 are only looking at uh, sexuality in terms of uh, uh, gayism and that they have not really looked at what bisexual means, transgender means, queer means, uh, questioning means, intersex means, asexual uh, aromantic, pansexual, non-binary, uh, gender queer, <laughs> in, uh, uh, agender, uh, start, uh, uh, magu, uh, muse. <laughs> well, your Excellency, I don't know, your Excellency, I mean, with all these um, <laughs> groups that you've given, are these uh, put in quote, learned people not actually putting all of them in one basket and saying that they all have human rights? In my in my view, they are only they are only rele relegating everything to the fact that this is a sexual act and that it takes place in private. That is why I have a problem with them. Not you are Somebody not saying it. You are not saying it from a human rights point of view, as they are talking about it. 
<laughs> what human rights are we talking about? We are talking about cultural practices. These are things that people have, have brought about in their own countries and they are fighting with it. I just come back from Canada. People are against some of the things they are doing. Their children are born now and you don't know which gender to, to, to give to them. The, the child is from a, a male and you, you don't want you want to leave out the gender portion and, and, and wait until that person uh, grows up uh, or, or becomes a questioning person who is questioning a gender or his gender. I mean, those are things that they should also look at. I don't think they are looking at it. We all agree that sex is a private matter between two percenting adults and it can take place anywhere. All these other things that are added on. All the added ones are what this bill is talking about. And I don't think they have given any attention to it. Have they really done that? Have they? I'm born a man. They say I'm transgender. I feel like I'm a woman. I mean, is that not so something wrong with that person who is thinking that way? And the professor is saying we don't have to look at that. All these other definitions are giving. I think that that is what the bill is aimed at because already we have all agreed that we have section 104, which deals with homosexuality. It is already there. We also have uh, 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 the offenses against uh, what you call having sex with children and, and the rest on that age, whether with, uh, whether with a consent or without a consent and all that. We know that. So why how are we treating those people who have this added on? Not only that, as for me, I want to be a homosexual or something. And a marriage. Is it not even affecting a marriage? That now a man wants to marry a man, a woman wants to marry a woman, and then go ahead to do adoption. We want to adopt, we want to have children. Okay. Knowing very well that the you know they have entered into cannot produce children. Your Excellency, just back, 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 back to my back to my question i mean how this should be handled i mean both sides obviously um got the right to put in these uh, memorandum and other uh, things as requested by the law and also requested by parliament but moving forward when everything is said and done how should parliament handle this and listen to both sides and come up with something that well if, if, if parliament concentrates on those other aspects that i've amed upon parliament should pass it we are not ready for it now Parliament should pass it because all the other things that that, that are coming in is, is more like a mental problem. I mean, in abroad, people in America, people go and shoot others, and they say, oh, they are having mental problems. They try to find excuses for it. Why can't we also find an excuse for some of these things that are happening and say that those people also need treatment? But we are saying they have a fundamental right to do whatever they like. You are right to freedom of thought and conscience. That means that you can do just anything you wish to do. We can't, we can't afford that. They should stop making the argument about two consenting adults having sex in private. We are all aware of that. That is not only the issue. All the other definitions, where are they coming from? Prof admits that before in 1960, we did not know these things. When did they come about? When did they come about? Okay. Um, did this start your Excellency, here? just uh, my final question to you, then I can move back to my guest here. You talked about Parliament uh, going into details to pass um, it, because if they go into details, they'll understand exactly what this bill is all about. What response do you have for um, the, um, the majority chief whip in Parliament? That's uh, put on social media on twitter to be specific and i quote it's unfortunate the lgbt bill is being politicized as the majority caucus in parliament we agree in principle that legislation legislation that protects Ghanaians' values in all areas of life must be supported however the bill as it is now is defective i, I i'm surprised at that because it's not gone to the consideration stage yet it is at that stage that they want to consider everything and then if if, if in their view it, it goes against the, the fundamental human rights of anybody that can be looked at because okay. i have said i've read the memorandum and they looked at all those issues as to whether some of the things they are talking about inflict the fundamental human rights and they found other examples like the this uh, 
political thing, you know, that vigilantism and the rest, you know, and uh, 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 terrorism and mm. cyber crimes, you know. They get various examples which shows that these rights are not absolute and that they, they could always be limited uh, in the public interest and okay. for the public good and, you know, morality and all that. So, to me, they should wait until they get to the concentration stage and take it line by line, right. and then they should be able to tell us what why they think that should not pass. Okay. Right. But I, am, I, my point is that we should stop limiting the whole argument to sex. Okay. And let's talk about the mental about issues, it. about the, the other things that, that we are talking about. All right. Hello, Let me move back to you in the studio. I should get ready to wrap up. Same question I ask His Excellency. I mean, how Parliament is really going to handle this particular issue. You are also a member of Parliament. We're going to do it as we deal with all, all bills. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to go for the, the committee is going to sit. Mm. And um, Prof made reference to the chairman of the committee. He's one member of an 18-member committee. Oh, that's his, his, view. View, his view is his entirely. He's entitled to it. And that, that will be respected. However, the report of the committee will be the report of the majority members on the committee. Mm -hmm. When I say majority, not a political side. Yeah. Then the majority view of the 18 mm. members of that committee. So, Honorable Ayimedu is entitled to hold the opinion, and, 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 and he's rightly stated that even though I disagree, and many members of his committee disagree with his interpretation of 108, mm. because, you see, Prof makes the point that the policing functions. We're not going to employ new policemen because of this bill. The police is already paid a salary to enforce the laws of the land that deal with criminal offenses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is not a new charge on the consolidated front. Mm -hmm. Again, when you say so, so that argument of of uh, 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 the police is neither here nor there about prisons. Again, you you are asking yourself: the state is always going to run prisons. Mm -hmm. It's always, and we're going to have people leaving the prisons and new people going in there. And the feeling. Don't forget, it's not only the state that builds prisons. Recently, the Church of Pentecost built a prison for and helped the state. state. And helped the state. You get it. And helped the state with it. Now, so, so when they say... What, what because if, 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 oh, just, just a last point on the 108. Just yeah. a last point on the 108. If we want to make that argument mm. that, oh, so long as there is a setting charge, that's the object of the bill. It puts a cost on the state. No. Mm. Because ah, any bill, any private member's bill, before the president assents to it, will be referred to the Attorney General for his advice to, to, to the state. Mm. The Attorney General is going to use resources which belong to the state. Mm. His advice is going to be on paper, printed by the state. Even if it's an electronic version, the data will be paid for by the state. So, you can, if, if, you, if you want to bring that version, and I'm happy Prof says she is one person who supports private members' bill. Because there are two views to one of it. Yeah. One which says that private members' bills can never even start at all. Because whichever way you go, there's going to be an attachment to the state. Mm. Or is the object imposing a new cost line? I, I take it from her position that she supports the second view that says, if it's not imposing a new cost line, then you can have private members' bills. And I'm saying to her that this bill doesn't impose a new cost line. Again, citing the EU Court of Justice. Citing the EU Court of Justice. Quickly, Yes, citing the EU Court of Justice. It's not a support for foreign things. <laughs> the, the whole concept of LGBTQ rights mm, mm -hmm. is a foreign construct. It foreign is, construct. Yes. She spoke up. She said she's, she's, ten, she's ten 17 next year. She's ten yes, 10 yes. grateful to God for the gift of long life for her. But when she was growing up, the Kojo Beziers and things you knew never came together in the community to tell you to recognize their rights. If somebody sets up a center, have they told no. you to come there? But that's but, a recognition. No, but, 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 but when you set up an advocacy office, exactly. you set up an advocacy office, mm. what is that office supposed to do? What is it going to advocate, advocate for? It is, it is set up an agency called LGBTQ Plus Rights Ghana. Mm. Would you have allowed them a leisure center? Well, they have no. We will not. The same no. way we will not. The I'm same way. The same way we will not allow a recreational That's center an for prostitutes. To actually no. To. Yeah, and I'm answering. The same way we wouldn't allow a recreational center mm. for prostitutes or a gym but for armed robbers. Prostitution is the same illegal. way. Is the same way we won't allow a recreational center for for for, for persons. So okay. the point I'm making to well, prof, yes, which you should appreciate, mm. is the fact that 
This is in direct response. You make reference to the World Council of Families. I mean, there's all well, kinds of... Congress. Congre yeah. Well, thank you for correcting. I don't even know them, but... You see, find out the about them. The point, is, the point is, there are also those who believe that the academia is being sponsored by pro-LGBTQ people. Mm. So it's all perception. The same way you may perceive that we are being sponsored by a certain co Congress, Congress of, of families, families or whatever. Yeah. Like I keep saying, well, if, if, there, if, there is, if there is such a Congress, mm. I am willing for them, if they have funded, to bring it. We will come to GBC, yes. receive it on GBC, yes. and do a proper accounting of how we use the funds for public education. Okay. I will run away from it. Right. Because we have Western money supporting the position. I'm not saying that that's what that is supporting the academia. But the position the academia has taken. You yeah. have evidence. There are persons. So he said, he said I, he's I said, not saying that. I am that, not so saying. He said he's not saying that. that so. bro, please listen to me. He said he's not saying that. So I'm, just, I'm saying that. I'm oh, saying just that. Wrap up for me, right? I am not saying that the academia, the 18 mm -hmm. of you, are supported by Western money. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that there is evidence mm -hmm. of Western money supporting persons of like mind who have been ad advocated. Okay. okay. So it is. It is. It is all perception. But mm -hmm. the last thing I will say is, Prof made a very telling statement. She said people die from malaria. Yes. And she made that point. She said one of my colleague MPs took her on that. Prof, that's the more reason why you must join us to fight against this canker. Because prof, the problems and medical challenges from the activities of homosexuality yes, far outweigh malaria. Dr. <laughs> far outweigh malaria. So if you agree, <laughs> if you agree yes. that we even have challenges with malaria, yes. because of your grandchildren, because of my children, let us not import further medical challenges that would even worsen our precarious medical situation okay. stop, today. Stop, 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 stop being emotive. Okay? I'm so, not being emotive. No, 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 I'm but being but factual. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm being I'm, factual. I'm, I'm, I'm using it to get to uh, an important point. Okay. okay. I'm being factual. About why some of us are supporting this bill. Mm. Okay? Mm. You may be too young, but if you know the people who are in this coalition and what they have done in this country, some of the facile statements that have been made will not be made. I'd love to hear you wait, when, wait, the, when the, the Achimota Rasta issue happened. Go and ask. I'd love to hear go, go, and ask, go, and ask the, go and ask the parents. You know, go, I'd love to hear you speak because I did, of the right no, of no, these young boys. No, 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 no Sam, Sam. So now. you will not lecture me on my activism. Mm. Huh? <laughs> go and ask the parents and go and find out what happened on the Wesley Girls platform when the Muslim students were going on. Okay. We don't need any lessons from anybody. Okay. No, no, no. The no, no, no. I don't speak nationally. You don't agree here. here. No, 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 no. Where, you, where you said you didn't so agree. I, I want to insist that yes. the Constitution, mm. not any aspect of Ghanaian culture, is the supreme law of the land and the measuring rod against which any bill must first be evaluated. Mm. Okay? So when we go to uh, Parliament, However valuable Ghanaian culture is, yes. Parliament does not swear fidelity to that. It mm. swears fidelity to the, to the Constitution. Constitution. So we are saying that Ghanaian cultural norms, no matter how widely shared, are themselves subject to the Constitution. That's mm. why the Constitution can vitiate a, a cultural practice mm. because it, gains, it goes against the Constitution. Okay? Okay. When Mr. Uh, Honorable Ayukwe Otu was speaking, this is what I was talking about, this cultural war. So he kept referring to what is happening in Canada. And therefore, if we don't know, this is what is going to happen. You know? So, the, the, and this thing about Western aid. The Ghanaian, ma Ghanaian state subsists on Western money, on money from abroad. So we are only using the argument because it's being used against all these yeah. Western things. We, we depend on so many Western things. All the V8s and things that you drive, they are coming from all of these things. So for me, it's the selectivity. Even the EU Court that, that of is, Justice, that is the EU the Court of yes, is that is the selectivity. When when something suits your purpose, then you will you will bring it out. If it doesn't, then so by all means, we are saying that it, the it, law, it, the bill yes. as presented, is 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 not worthy. Okay, that we have laws, the Criminal Offences Act, mm. all of those things. Let us go back and look at those laws. If they are deficient, let us tighten them. If there's ambiguity, let's deal with them. Every day we are hearing about abuse of children. Mm. We are very concerned about children. The vast majority of that abuse is being perpetrated by heterosexual people. And yet in the bill, there's a lot of innuendo, again without evidence. 
about okay. what gay people do All in right, relation we'll, to we'll, 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 this, this, this is, is, is unfolding yeah. so i mean there's going to be enough time and more time for us to talk mm -hmm. about this especially when he moves to parliament maybe um Rose and george we can we can look at the the, the hungry experience you know hungry they passed the law oh that is another they... one of the right wing places <laughs> yeah go and find out about hungary but but there was oh, a, no, 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 no just hold on but 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 there was but but there was but was but was but was there was something significant marriage we are not advocating there was something for, 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 for the hungry experience there was something significant they did in the country to even have that law you want us to have a referendum well, it would be it, overwhelming. Well, there was something significant they did in Hungary. Let me, let me, let me just quickly move to um, His Excellency. Your final word, a minute, then we can wrap up. Your final oh, word. is not always right, you know. Oh, well, uh, you see, why you you uh, elevate, you know, uh, these things into human rights issues, oh, then it changes the color of the argument. I remember earlier on when this whole idea started in the, this argument started in the South Africa, the point was made that they spoke in their definition of discrimination about uh, uh, sexual orientation, sexual orientation. Unfortunately, in our section, uh, Article 17, we have gender. We don't have any sexual orientation there. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we've now started having this whole idea of uh, the, the becoming a human rights issue. And that is why there is a sharp divide between those who have people have a human right that ought to be respected mm -hmm. as against those who, who think that it's just... Uh, uh, some de 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 defect that must have to be corrected, and uh, it's it's uh, uh, against our cultural practices. So it, it, the argument has changed because now people are talking about human rights, and like if you are not uh, supporting somebody's human rights, then you are like a conservative. Okay, all right. We'll leave, we'll leave it here. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, I was am George. Thank you very much. Yes, Prof. Political, you very scientific. Much. For your time, it's been great having you around. And um, this particular program will be repeated uh, this evening at 11 p.m. after a major news bulletin on GTV. So in case you missed some part of it or some people did miss it, uh, you can just um, watch it again this evening at 11 p.m. Focus will continue same time next week at 9. My name is George Ni Donusafo. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.